Welcome to Marketing Made Simple TV. My name is Jeff Ogden, the host of the show. And first of all, I got to apologize. I've changed my hat. I normally wear this country gentleman hat on every show, but I actually left it someplace. It's being shipped back. It'll be here for the next show. But until then, I got to plug my alma mater, the University of Notre Dame. So <laughs> I'm really excited about today's show because we've got a very different kind of guest. We've had people talking about leadership, about trust, about social media, about marketing, all kinds of things. But now we have a very different kind of guest who's an expert in technology. Nellie Yusupova is the CTO of Web Girls International. She's the chapter leader of New York City Web Girls. She's the founder of digitalwoman.com, and she's the correct creator of TechSpeak for Entrepreneurs. She was recently included in Fast Company's League of Extraordinary Women, and she's been at the forefront of the women's movement since 1999 and is a Wall Street Journal's woman on the IT fast track. She's a technical strategist, an internet social media marketing expert and consultant. She works with entrepreneurs and teaches them how to use and leverage technology in their business. Let's welcome Nellie on the show. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to have you here. So we'll start you off with a question we ask every guest on the show. It's a tradition of the show, and it's very simply, who are you and what? <laughs> well, it's a simple question, but uh, sometimes hard to answer. Uh, I am a CTO of a company called Web Girls International. It's a community of professional women who are in or interested in technology or are leveraging technology in their professional lives. I also run a consulting company called Digital Woman, run the New York City chapter of Web Girls, and, late, and my latest project is called TechSpeak for Entrepreneurs, which is a two-day two -day boot camp designed to teach non-tech entrepreneurs how to work with developers and not get ripped off. Uh, so that's, I guess, to summarize, you can call me a geek. <laughs> I've learned it, I lived it, and I love it. Well, that's good, and I think a geek is probably a one-word description that fits pretty well, but I think it's great to have you on the show because obviously a lot of entrepreneurs are in the technology industry, and they're, they're wondering why, you know, I founded a company, I run a company, I hire IT folks. Why is it important for the business owners to understand technology? I think uh, as, a, as a business owner, if you don't understand technology, you're losing a lot of money and leaving a lot of money on the table. Because through communication, I think uh, when you speak the same language, you understand what the other, the other person's thoughts are, uh, you minimize the mistake. The communication is probably the most effective way of getting stuff done in the business world. And if you guys, the business people and the tech people, who completely speak totally different languages, if you don't speak the same language, there's a lot of opportunity for mistakes. So if you as a business person want to create the most efficient strategies, the most efficient ways of getting stuff done, you need to be able to speak the same language as the Not necessarily learn how to code, but at least speak the same language. Well, Nellie, I, I, it's interesting uh, feedback that entrepreneurs need to be able to talk to their technology people and talk the same language. I think you have some good examples of people who failed to do that and got burned. Could you share some of these examples with us? Absolutely, Jeff. In a uh, worst situation I was asked to rescue was working with a businesswoman who had a great idea, a great vision, and decided to partner up with a tech person simply because she didn't understand the process of building out a web or a mobile application, she made a ton of mistakes. She completely trusted the person. She didn't vet them correctly. She, um, didn't, don't, did, she didn't know how to track the project so that it can be delivered on time and on budget. And ultimately, she lost $60,000. That's six zero and a year worth of development time. And I think that, yes, $60,000 is a lot of money, and it's just money. I think the, bigger, the biggest problem here is losing a year of development time. Because she lost the opportunity to bring her idea to market. And because by the time it was a year later, 
she no longer, or that the idea was no longer viable. It was too late for the great early idea to be able to, to come to life. And so as, a, as an entrepreneur who was excited about getting something to market, she had to go and get a job, which is very, very Interesting, and I like the fact that you talk about, you know, you have to bring an idea to market quickly and, and you know, get there while the market is there because the market not, might not be there for, forever. So one of the things you talk about is entrepreneurs need to be able to communicate their ideas to their technology people. How do they? Well, the first thing is to say, I want to learn about technology. There's a lot of entrepreneurs that I talk to who naturally say, oh, I'm a business person. I'm a CEO. I just don't need to know technology. I have tech people doing this for me. And I think that that's a very big mistake that uh, non-technical people uh, make. The assumption is that the tech people will take care of everything. But technology is not separate from business. Technology is very much intertwined into business. And the decisions that you make in the business world, the technology is supposed to support it. And if you are a business person and don't know how to communicate, then that's a big, big issue. Um, and so to get started with this, you first number, the first thing you need to do is just acknowledge that you need to learn it. And because it's a separate language, technology is a separate language, you need to understand the lingo. You need to go out and learn the terminology and find out what it means, just simply with that. The second thing is um, understanding how to wireframe and prototype your ideas. So a lot of uh, people hear about, about wireframing and prototyping, and they get completely intimidated. They uh, think of these machines that you build, and uh, and it's very, very intimidating. But I am here to tell you that as a, uh, as a tech person, I've taught many, many non-tech people how to prototype their ideas. So entrepreneurs have a billion ideas a minute. And how do you bet which ideas are good and which ideas you need to build and actually go to tech people to build? So if you learn how to wireframe, and just as a background, a wireframe is a blueprint of your idea, of what it looks like visually, how it functions. If you want to bring up uh, an example of a wireframe, um, I can walk you through it. It's basically uh, similar to what a website or a mobile application would look like as an end product. Uh, and you can actually put annotations or instructions for your tech people there. And so wireframing and prototyping is one way where you can create your ideas and then take them and share them with other people, potential customers, uh, and get actual feedback so that you can refine your ideas before it gets into development and save yourself a lot of time. So here, uh, we, we, here we are talking about uh, the prototype. And if you, uh, Craig, if you can bring up the previous screen uh, with the images of, of wireframes, and I can show you some of the examples. So this is the previous screen. So this is, a, this is an example of a prototype that I built for our developers when I was creating the TechSpeak for Entrepreneurs website. And this is the registration page. Essentially, it's just a layout of what that page would look like with annotations. Uh, with the, the, gray, the, gray, the gray numbers are annotations with instructions for the developers. Great. Well, thank you very much. Very interesting. So, uh, so you talk about building prototypes and using wireframes to do that, which is, which is certainly a, a very good thing. So let's talk about some of the key tips of what entrepreneurs need to be aware of. I think you have a good slide for that, too. So why, why don't I bring that up and you can talk to us about it. So here are some tips that I put together to make sure that you don't get ripped off by tech people. The first thing is to break a project into chunks. Oftentimes, entrepreneurs have a huge idea. And in order to build it out from A to Z, it will take six months to a year. And what they do is they give that entire project to a tech team and say, here, go build that for me. What I recommend is take that three, six, three months, six months, a year project and break it into small chunks so that you can manage them 
uh, correctly. You can manage them uh, easily. You can uh, keep track of the progress easily. And it just, uh, just helps so much to be able to focus on the smaller tasks rather than the entire project. And the second thing is uh, based on payment. A lot of entrepreneurs make mistakes around this area. They make payments on a regular interval versus based on milestones. So the first thing that I would recommend is take that three, three, three to six month project, break it into two week periods, and then only remit payment at the end of every two weeks, only after you have tested it on your server. So a lot of uh, developers will tell you, well, here's where you can test it. It's on my server. And go and test it. And then you remit the payment, and they will refuse to actually move it to your server. And so you still lose the information. And uh, the next tip is test early and test often. Besides breaking the project down into two-week periods, I will actually further break it down into tasks. And each task will be no longer than two days to implement. So that gives me an opportunity to keep track of my progress every day, or at the latest, every two days. That way, if we realize that we've, gone, we've done something wrong, I'm only, lost, I'm only losing two days instead of a week, or two weeks, or three months, or six months. So this, is what, this is a great tip for you to be able to execute the project and make sure that you can track and make sure that you can actually get there and not lose a lot of time in development time. And the last tip is probably my favorite one. And a lot of people make mistakes around it. It's making sure that all of the accounts that, that your tech people create for you are in your name. Oftentimes, when you start to work with tech people, they don't want to bother you. So they'll create an account in their name, and they never transfer it to you. Whether something happens to that person, they leave your company, or they want to hold you hostage, they, if the account is in their name, you can't even call a tech support company and, uh, and t tell them, this is my company, this is my account, I want this information. They won't give it to you. So make sure that all of your accounts are in your name and you will be golden. Those are great tips. And if I could just restate them, you say, don't try to do everything all at once. So break it up into small chunks, which in everything is a great idea, even in marketing and lead nurturing and everything. Great idea. Break it up. Pay based on milestones and not just dates. Make sure that, you know, they actually accomplish something and you test on your own server. Test early and often. Make sure, so make sure it, it works and make sure you set it up in your own accounts. So those are great, great advice. I appreciate that. So if, you're, if some of the entrepreneurs are watching the show and they said, you know, Nelly, I agree with what you're saying, and I as an entrepreneur need to get more comfortable with technology. What well, there's a lot of resources everywhere. You'll, the web is probably your number one best friend. All you have to do is, if you have a question, is Google that term, and you will find so much information about it. Or you can take workshops and classes. Um, I, like I said, I created TechSeek for Entrepreneurs, uh, which is a two-day boot camp. And in two days, I'm going to teach you a lot of the processes that you need uh, so that you can work with developers. And as you understand the processes, you can actually catch the red flag. You can see mistakes earlier and minimize the mistakes, the financial burden that each mistake uh, creates. So, we have lots of events scheduled. Check out TechSeek for Entrepreneurs or similar classes like that. There's, there's a lot of information online. And make sure that you just make a decision to stay involved and everything is going to be great. That's great, Nelly. And I saw you even have an offer for viewers of the show that you have. A, what's, the, what's the offer that you so generously made to viewers of the show? So I would love to offer a 15% discount to, to this community, and the discount code is MMFTV. And if you follow the Bitly link, you will be able to go there directly. Yes, yeah, so I want to point out, and MMSTV stands for Marketing Made Simple TV, which is this show. And in addition to the Bitly link, you don't have to write it down. It's actually going to, it's at the top of the screen. So if you just click the button at the top of the screen, it'll take you directly to that page 
to sign up for the boot camp workshops. So, all right. So anyway, this has been a great interview. Do you have any last tips of if you're talking directly to these entrepreneurs, what you want to say to them right to their face right now? What would you? You have to be able to be tech literate. Everything in this in the 21st century is going to tech, and if you are not keeping up with technology, whether it's social media or mobile or location-based services, you have to understand how they impact your business. So learn about it, stay involved, and follow people in your industry who know about these technologies and tools so that you can uh, be able to stay on top of it. The technology is changing so quickly that sometimes it could seem overwhelming. You just have to make a decision that you will stay involved. And as a result, your business will be. Thanks, Nellie. You've been, you've been great on the show. Before we go, let's just say people who want to get in touch with you or see the, the kind of things that you do, how can they uh, learn? The best place to go is digitalwoman.com. And you'll find all of my contact information, all of the projects that I'm involved in, and uh, a link to Web World and New York City chapter and a uh, text I want to thank Nellie for being a great guest on the show. Uh, really good stuff. So go to digitalwoman.com. You'll find all of her information there, and you can, you can check it out. Before we go, we've got to thank our sponsors, because our sponsors make the show possible. Avatage is a great content marketing company up in Boston. Video content, very creative, uh, really good company. Digitalethos.org is an uh, educational site, nonprofit, communication strategy group. Brand telling, public relations, really good stuff. Eloqua, the world's largest uh, revenue performance management company, acquired by Oracle recently. And finally, Watchitude provides the great platform that we use for Marketing Made Simple TV. Marketing Made Simple TV premieres every Thursday at noon. So until next week, we'll see you next time on Marketing Made Simple TV.